everybody! This is Alex from Embertone, and I am doing a walkthrough video for our newest creation, the Honky Tonk Harmonica. It has been a while since our last release, and we're so excited to share this with you all. Um, this is an instrument we've been working on for a long time, along with a number of others, but this one um, captures a special gap, I think, in the sampling world, which is a really nice bluesy, soulful sounding harmonica. Uh, this is an instrument that we recorded locally here in Asheville, North Carolina at Echo Mountain Studios with a harmonica player named Andy John, who's great. And um, we captured a lot of great samples, uh, legato samples and bluesy legato samples along with lots of different sustains with uh, non vibrato so that you can control it in a lot of ways uh, which is there's some new features that we have but then also um, sample vibrato in case you just want to hear natural harmonica vibrato so uh, the structure of this video will be kind of simple I'm going to noodle around now and then after that I'll go through every control in the harmonica so you can get a really complete feel for the instrument here we go All right, so let's go through all the controls of the instrument. Um, throughout, I'm going to do a little more noodling around, but we'll talk about everything we got here. So we'll start with dynamics. Uh, we sampled the instrument with one dynamic layer, but then we created a dynamic model. Check it out. And then we have vibrato depth, speed, and delay. Depth would be the peaks and the valleys, kind of the um, waves of the vibrato, or the height of the waves. and speed here.
and then delay is um, just a short bit of time after a note is played uh, before you hear the vibrato. All right, so what we've been hearing so far is LFO vibrato, and that's basically all the uh, scripted vibrato that we've done on in all the instruments so far. For the harmonica, we came up with a manual vibrato, and I'm really excited about the manual vibrato because on a keyboard, specifically with aftertouch, you can control the speed and the depth of the vibrato um, in real time just with the pressure you're putting on the keys. In conjunction with the LFO and the manual vibrato, there's also real sample vibrato. Um, and sometimes on a note that's super exposed or um, something that you're just trying to get a different kind of expression from, having Andy John's real vibrato is the answer. This is what it sounds like. All right, and now we have articulations. There's long, which is what we've been hearing. It's just sustains and legato, and shorts. Let's take a listen to the shorts. So there's two different kinds of shorts. There's just regular. And then there's bend shorts, which are triggered with higher velocity. Then there's auto, uh, and in auto mode, um, when you play short on the keys, you hear short articulations. And when you play long, you hear longs. My personal preference is to be able to control the articulations myself using key switches, but um, if you're looking for a really easy mode that doesn't require key switches, auto mode might be the solution for you. Oh, it's really worth mentioning that this instrument has some sampled trills that are really great. There's two different kinds of trills, um, both in minor third and major third configurations. There are progressive trills that start slow and get faster.
When the key switch is played low velocity, you get minor trills. When the key switch is played high velocity, you get major trills. And it should be noted that you could play the key switch first and then the note. Or when you play the key switch on the fly, it immediately starts the trill. There's also constant trills. These don't change speed, they just start and end at roughly the same velocity. And then we have the typical reverb here that has a dial for reverb amount and a set of eight impulse responses. So let's listen to some of the reverb. All right, now we have poly. The poly button um, allows you to play legato, but polyphonically. All right, so we also have the round robins. Um, you can choose not to use round robin samples, so that would be something like this. And then there's sequenced round robin, which is predictable. And then there's a randomized round robin, so it doesn't have as much of a predictable sequence to it. All right, you could choose between stereo samples or a folded down mono samples. And then there are two extra buttons called age and grit. The age button tries to make the sound a little bit older and it adds a tape effect and uh, just a little bit of subtle crunch to it. And then there's grit. Um, we put a little bit of a more crunch in an amp on the sound. So moving away from the main page, we'll go into chugger mode. So in chugging mode, you're playing different rhythms and chords. Uh, and it's something that could be standalone 
just a solo harmonica player chugging on their own, but I can imagine chugging as a really great way to back up a band and play rhythm. So let's listen to some of the different uh, chugging patterns that we have. I should also mention too, if you could see the colors on the keyboard here, the orange keys, that's the range of the instrument. All these multicolors, these are the key switches. And then all of the purple keys outside of that range are for chugging. If you were to play any triads, minor or major, you'll hear the associated phrase that you've chosen uh, in those keys. The trigger can be set to chord detect, which is what I was doing, uh, playing triads in major and minor and having them be recognized. And then there's root note trigger, which allows you, especially if you're not a keyboard player and you're not wanting to play those triads, you could just play the root note and if you play it soft, you'll hear minor. And if you play it hard, you'll hear major. Then there's also free running, and so that means as soon as you play the phrase, it'll be triggered right away. And then there's next beat and next bar, so if you're working in a DAW, uh, your timing doesn't have to be perfect, and it, the phrase will be triggered either on the next beat or the next bar. Loop continuous, um, that means the loop or phrase will play through continuously when you change chords. Or, if you uh, change it, it could be loop restart. So that means every time you change a chord, it starts from the beginning of that loop again. All right, so that's the chugger. If you have a blues track or a country track or something along those lines, um, you could easily drop one of these chugging patterns in there and um, just make the MIDI mock, mock up really pop. All right, let's head to the configure page. This page is packed full of controls. Up here on the top left, you have adaptive legato, and that's something that we've been doing for almost a decade now. Uh, adaptive legato means that when you play faster, the, transi the legato transitions are compressed, and then when you play slower, they're elongated. If you turn that off, uh, there's no speed control. It'll be the same. There's no compression or elongation of the legato transition. You could feel a huge difference under your fingers. If you choose to purge the legato samples, then you will have a lot of nice sustains to play. There's a big difference uh, between the legato samples and not. You could also purge the release samples, which play when you release a note. You could also choose to play dynamics instead of CC by velocity. And you'll notice that the velocity thresholds down here change when you do that. Uh, and it feels a lot different when you play this way. Um, it's pretty expressive, but then you can't change dynamics in the middle of a note.
All right, let's talk about this velocity threshold slider. At the bottom end, when, at the lowest velocity, you can choose between gliss, bend, and soft. This is what gliss sounds like. Let's turn the dynamics up back up. Here's a bend. If you choose soft, you'll get a slight dip in the attack when you play at a low velocity, and that's really expressive and nice, especially for slower tempo stuff. Then you have normal, kind of vanilla, typical harmonic attack. And above that, you have the strong attacks. There you go. And then at the top, you have bends. And you'll notice here you could select the same things that you can on the bottom except for the soft feature. So you can either have it uh, not do anything at the top, or play glisses, or bends. All right, let's talk about MIDI control. Um, it's nothing different, really, from some of our previous instruments. You choose the CC you want for dynamics and all the vibrato elements. And when you want to do a MIDI learn, you just press that little MIDI button and then wiggle the CC that you want to use. Um, the only difference here is that manual vibrato, uh, you could select aftertouch. Um, if you move that over to like CC number one, then it'll sound like this. It's a little bit more labor intensive that way. Um, if you have aftertouch on your keyboard, you gotta use manual vibrato that way. It's really fun. There's legato responsiveness. And so at the very bottom here of the slider, you have very slow legato, but you hear a lot of the legato transition. And then at the very top, you hear very little of the legato transition. And finally, the key switches. Um, there are 15 key switches, which is a lot. Um, there's not a lot to say here that other than that you could MIDI learn these notes the same way you could do with MIDI control. And there are two sets of toggle key switches. There's the long, short, auto from the front page. Um, and there are little padlocks. And so I just want to explain real quick what those padlocks do. Um, when the padlock is locked, that means you will latch that key switch. Whenever it's pressed, it will stick there and magnetize. When it is unlocked, that is a momentary key switch that defaults back to whatever you were playing previously when you let go of the key switch. And then when you see a little VEL, that just means it's velocity dependent. That means a low velocity will give you a momentary key switch, and a high velocity will give you a latching key switch that sticks. Those toggles, long, short, auto, and then also you can go between vibrato modes the same way. Those are toggle key switches as well. Maybe I'll also just finally mention the ghost note, it's a really interesting uh, key switch that allows you to play the next note and not create any sound. And the sound will come in on the second note you play. And that's helpful if you want to bend or slide into a destination note from a specific note, because you'll hear the legato transition without the first note.
it's especially effective when you're um, playing bluesy legato. So that's it. I went through every control here on our new Honky Tonk Harmonica. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot us an email or even leave comments on the YouTube video. We'll, be, we'll do our best to respond. Um, I can't wait to see what people do with this instrument. I think it fills an important gap in the sampling world. And I think there's a lot of great music to be made with the Honky Tonk Harmonica. So for now, signing off. See y'all later.